Hey everyone, how's it going? A big welcome to another video. In this video, I will be talking about how to beat the Queen's Indian defense with white. And the Queen's Indian defense is known for being a very solid defense. So definitely you want to know what to do against it if you play uh, 1d4 with white and you allow the Queen's Indian. So if you are a competitive chess player and you want to find your chess progress, then you might be interested in starting a side hustle to earn an extra income online. If that's the case, go to the link in the description, insert your name and email, and watch my free introductory training where you will learn the three secrets my mentors use to generate a consistent income online and how you can do it too, even if you have no previous experience. So without further ado, I will be sharing my screen and I will be showing to you a very cool opening trap against the Queen's Indian defense. So here we go. The Queen's Indian starts after one D4 from white and knight of six. Of course, there are many move orders that lead to the same position. For example, if you are white here and you suspect your opponent might want to go for the Budapest Gambit and you want to avoid it, you can go to knight F3 and uh, then play C4. Uh, if they go e6, uh, for example, yeah, like e6, c4, and b6, and we get to the same position, and you've avoided the Budapest Gambit, which rises after um, this move order. But let's say, let's stick to the most common move order, which is e6, knight f3, b6. Okay, so b6 is the move which defines the Queen's Indian, and um, other options here are bishop before check the bogo indian d5 is certainly a very good option it's the top choice right now in high level there is c5 as well which um, could lead to a benoni or to a blumenfeld gambit perhaps anyway uh, by going knight f3 here it's one of the three main options the other ones are knight c3 and g3 uh, but by going knight f3, white clearly states that they want to avoid the Nimzo Indian uh, and the pin after uh, knight c3, bishop b4, which is also a very, very common and popular um, move. So knight f3, b6 is the queen's Indian. And here, apart from g3, the other main move is a3, which is the Petrosian slash Kasparov variation, famous after these two players. Particularly, Kasparov played some beautiful games with it in the 1980s. So if you want to learn about 4A3, I would highly recommend to study the games of Gary Kasparov. Another possible move is knight c3, which allows the pin after bishop before. Uh, maybe you want to avoid this with white. Maybe you want to allow it. It's up to you. But I will stick to g3, which is um, certainly uh, the main move uh, throughout history. And um, after g3, now black has a choice. Uh, for example, bishop a6 is what some people prefer. Bishop b4 is certainly possible. The most common though is bishop b7. After bishop b7, bishop g2. Now again, there are other options. For example, bishop b4 can be thrown in here, uh, but bishop e 7 is the main move, castles and castles. Now whites are the crossroad here and they need to make a choice which of the three main moves they will pick. For example, knight c3 is um, known to be the most common move. And after knight c3, the best way for black to play, which is considered to be close to equal, is knight e4. Because black has less space, and following the chess principles, when you have less space, you want to exchange pieces. So knight e4 offers an exchange of pieces, and also it takes advantage of the fact that by taking on c3, the knight will be hitting the queen. So, um, yeah, knight e4 is a very principled way for, for black to play. Apart from knight c3, a very famous move is d5, which leads to long theory, to potentially a pawn sacrifice from white. Maybe they could even get the pawn back. Um, yeah, d5 is also a very popular way to play here for white. But I will be focusing on rook e1, which has been the recent trend. Many strong players prefer it because... Um, it's a move which is useful because it um, helps um, the e4 move being played because white wants to go e4 here. 
um, because um, in the Queen's Indian, it's a hyper modern opening, as Limsovich would say, because black controls the center with pieces and not with pawns. So here, uh, the a4 break is prohibited by black from their minor pieces, their bishop on b7 and their knight on f6. Rook e1 is a very interesting move, and you might even catch your opponents off guard because they will be more used to knight c3, perhaps. Well, if they go for d6, and having said that, black has a number of choices here, apart from d6, which is the topic of this video, they could go for a5, perhaps, they could go for knight a6, they could go for queen c8, which protects the bishop, they could go for h6, and they could go for knight e4, uh, knight e4 is best met with knight ft2, by the way, which takes advantage of a very important detail in the Queen's Indian that the bishop on g2 of white is protected by the king, it's defended, while the bishop on b7 is unprotected, at least for the moment, and white tries to, tries to take advantage of this. So um, often in chess, tactics arise because of undefended pieces, and in this video, this will also be the case. It will prove to you that tactics in chess arise very often because of undefended pieces. So we're going to be focusing on d6 in this video, and after d6, uh, the best move for white is to go knight c3. Now they want to play e4. Well, if black tries to stop it, then the insertion of the moves rook e1 and d6 favors white. And I'm going to prove to this Right now, with the move knight e4, the best way to meet it according to the engine is knight g5. And uh, knight g5 aims to take advantage of the fact that the bishop on b7 is undefended. So here in this position, black has two main choices. I'm going to start with the first one, which is knight takes c3. And after knight takes c3, the best move for white is to simply go queen c2. And after queen c2, a checkmate on h7 is threatened. And also the bishop on b7 is threatened. So I'm going to start with knight takes c2, which is meant by rook takes c2. And now black has to do something about the checkmate on h7. Before it was a check, but now it's threatened. So if bishop takes u5, simply bishop takes uh, b7. And... Uh, if bishop takes c1, rook takes c1. Now knight d7, and we take the rook on a8, and we are up an exchange, and white is completely winning here. So this is one possibility. Now I'm going to be going back after queen c2 in this position. So remember, it was the seven rook e1, queen's indian, d6, knight c3, knight e4, knight g5, the best move according to the computer. And now knight takes c3, one of the two most common moves after knight takes c3, queen c2. And now if bishop takes b5, then bishop takes b7, it bags an exchange for white because the rook on a8 is trapped. Bishop takes g5 was played because the knight on, g on g5 along with the queen on c2, they were combining in threatening a checkmate on h7. Now, if knight e4 here, then bishop takes e4 with... Um, a threat against the bishop on b7 and also a threatening to take on h7. So if bishop takes e4, queen takes e4, and if bishop takes e5, queen takes a8. And of course, if taking on c1, the a rook will take back potentially maybe even the other rook. Uh, again, white is a clear exchange up in this situation too. So it seems that after knight g5, the best move for black is to go bishop takes g5. Now, after bishop takes g5, um, there are a few choices. Uh, bishop takes g5, takes back the piece and hits the black queen. And now if the black queen takes on g5, the knight takes e4. And uh, after, um, for example, queen e7, then knight f6, queen takes f6, bishop takes b7, and uh, white is winning the exchange because the rook on a8 is trapped. Now, if uh, bishop takes e4 here, then, uh, okay, yeah, bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4, and c6. This might be black's best uh, option because at least there is no material loss. Now, if not for this, then uh, going back, then what about knight takes g5? Well, knight takes g5 is not good for the obvious reason. Bishop takes b7, and... Um, in this situation, again, white wins the exchange. And what about knight takes, 
g5 immediately. Well, knight takes g5, again, is met by bishop takes b7. So it seems that if black falls for this trap after rook e1, d6, personally, I'm not a big fan of d6 exactly for this reason. And if you go after knight c3, anything else, for example, um, knight d7, then white gets e4. And if you go d5, it's not the pawn structure that you want. For example, here, um, white could go knight e5, perhaps. Well, um, d6 is not the move I would be a big fan of here. Um, other options for black to consider. If they don't like this, then they can play the four bishop a6, queen's Indian. There are other options, uh, but this and or, or any of these other options like a5, like knight a6, queen c8, h6. There are maybe not knight e4 because of knight fd2. But if they get into this situation with rook e1, d6, knight c3, and now knight e4, now after knight e4, the best move for white is to go knight g5 according to the engine and after knight g5 even though most people they go queen c2 but queen c2 allows black to get away with it with f5 perhaps and now if knight d2 then d5 i'm definitely not saying that this equalizes still white has the advantage here but in the other situation it's much bigger the advantage so why not just go knight g5 here with white and if they go for uh, knight takes c3 then you punish them with queen c2 and if not, if uh, bishop takes g5, then bishop takes g5, queen takes g5 here, and knight takes e4. This is black's best option just to make the most of a bad situation. Bishop takes, bishop takes, and now c6. And after c6, at least black has avoided losing material. Of course, though, uh, they have not equalized. Uh, white has a clear advantage here. It's more than plus one according to the engine, and it's definitely something that black should avoid. Anyway, I hope that you took value from this video. This video is very important if you are a 1d4 player and you allow the Queen's Indian and you meet the Queen's Indian with g3. If you are bored of the situations that arise after um, knight c3, knight e4, which can be rather drawish perhaps in some situations. If you want to surprise your opponents perhaps, as rook e1 is uh, not so commonly played as uh, knight c3, if you want to get them... Uh, out of their comfort zone, then rook e1 is a very interesting move that I would recommend. It's unexplored, perhaps at a lower level. At a higher level, of course, this is all well, well known. Rook e1 has been played by Carlsen as well. And it's just an interesting antidote to 93-94. It's an interesting alternative, let's say. So this is also very useful if you are a Queen's Indian player and you meet a fourth g3 with bishop b7. You definitely need to know about this then because you don't want to fall into this trap. And uh, yeah, I hope. And of course, if you fall into both categories, then again, this is something that you certainly should know because uh, yeah, you can win games with white like this or at least get a big advantage. Of course, getting a winning position is one thing and converting it is another. And also, if you are black, you definitely want to avoid starting the game uh, with uh, falling into an opening trap. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful uh, for your chess. Now, if you are a competitive chess player and you want to fund your chess progress, such as traveling to tournaments, which has expenses like transport, if it's in another city, accommodation, if not a one day event, entry fees, if you're really serious about your chess and you want to hire a coach, just like I have done myself, and I'm also a coach, I teach others. If you want to invest into chess books and chess courses, then you might be interested in starting a side hustle to earn an extra income online. If that's the case, go to the link in the description, insert your name and email, and watch my free introductory training where you will learn the three secrets my mentors use to generate a consistent income online and how you can do it too, even if you have no previous experience. If you're a subscriber, I will catch you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.